I'd like to welcome back Tom Davidson. Tom is a personal trainer, lifestyle coach, and owner of Patch, Melbourne's very first paleo restaurant in Richmond. We're going to talk today about the paleo lifestyle and diet. Good to see you, Tom. Thanks, Bryony. Good to see you too, mate. Thanks for coming back to talk to us. Now, tell us a little bit about the paleo lifestyle and diet for those who don't really know much about it. Sure. Well, the paleo lifestyle and diet um, comes from the word Paleolithic, which is a time in history about 10,000 years ago before agriculture was invented by humans. So before we had access to mass amounts of food and we didn't have to work for it, basically. So if you think back to those days and to make it simple, you kind of think of the hunter-gatherer days, you know, where you had to forage for your food, you had to walk around and and eat nuts and berries and things like that and then hunt things. Mm. So um, basically... What I'm trying to do with my, as you know, I do lots of personal training. So with my personal training clients and my restaurant is try and take some things from those times and bring them into modern day life. It's it's sometimes hard to completely change, but Mm. um, basically paleo eating is cutting out all the processed food. So basically thinking back to those days and thinking, okay, so is this bag of chips, could could we have got that back then in those hunting together (laughs) times? That's that's a no. Yeah. Could we pick an apple from a tree? Yes. Could we eat a fish? Yes. Could we eat a loaf of bread? No. Mm. So all those kind of mass-produced grains and sugars and and refined things have been invented by humans. Very clever. But, I mean, this this conversation could go on a long time. But basically, Mm. if we continue to eat all those mass-produced processed foods, you know, things like diabetes and... and, um, We're not getting healthier for it, are we? We're not getting healthier for it, basically. So eating those unprocessed natural things, you know, locally sourced things as much as possible and, you know, grass-fed cuts of meat and and unfarmed fish Mm. is, uh, is the way to go for optimum health. And is it, is it difficult because obviously we're all living this fast-paced lifestyle and busy with children or whatever it is that's going on in our lives. Back in the hunter-gatherer days, all they obviously did was gather food. So how can we incorporate it into our everyday life? Yeah, that's right. I mean, back then the, the main thing was just surviving, wasn't it? So, mm. And, you know, life expectancy back then wasn't as great as it is now because we've got medicine yes. and we can keep ourselves alive for we're longer. We're not going to be eaten by an animal anytime exactly, soon. Exactly. Yeah. So there's less dangers. But, um, I mean, when you look back to those those times and the studies show that humans were taller, smarter, leaner, fitter. And if they survived all those things we just talked about, mm. those dangerous things, they can live into their 70s and 80s fully healthy yeah. and mobile. Um, but you're right. I mean, we've got to try and take or add things to our daily life and, and um, try and move as much as possible. You know, think back to those days and there was no cars, there was no couches. So mm. try and walk places, try and take the stairs, don't take the lift, uh, little things like that. And try and prepare your food as much as possible and, and teach your kids if you've got a family that this is the way we should eat and, and make, it an, make it an enjoyable experience to um, prepare food. In terms of you've got a bit of a philosophy about the way we should be moving as well that goes with the paleo lifestyle. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Well, yeah, as I just said, I mean, trying to add movement things into your day mm. i mean if you you know so if you, is that incidental exercise? incidental exercise that's it yes yeah. so if you normally drive to work and you have to drive to work you could park a bit further away from work and, and walk you mm. know, a kilometer or you could ride your bike or if you go out for dinner at night time you know take public transport and get off a couple of stops earlier and walk the rest of the way yeah and take the stairs never take the lift yes. i reckon there should be a, a uh, little 50 cent coin slot in the elevators in places mm-hmm. yeah and probably detra- detract people from um taking their, taking <laughs> i'm sure their the life. office building would like that <laughs> yeah yeah and then doing things like the paleo paleo days you know people walked a lot to forage for food and to you know mm. find places to live and things like that but they also sprinted a bit you know to yeah. get away from stuff and to hunt things and so with my exercise philosophy i like to add in a short burst of high intensity exercise so interval training and mm-hmm. you can do that by going to the park and playing frisbee you can do it by running up and down stairs you can do it by you know anything that pushes your heart rate up and then you rest it down again so yeah. not doing chronic cardio that's 
Well, for anyone that's got a, a child out there, I know that um, I don't know why it was my daughter. They, should, they could have a, a lend of her. That she, as soon as she started walking, she would just bolt for the most dangerous thing she could possibly find. And we'd be, I'd be at the park having mothers groups, and my daughter's running off the whole time. And I actually cancelled my gym membership at the time because I was like, I don't need to go to the gym. I'm constantly chasing my daughter, and all the other kids would just sit there eating biscuits, and their mothers would sit there eating biscuits, complaining about their weight, and I was like, lost too much weight because I'm chasing this child all the time so I don't know if an active person has an active child or what goes on but there's definitely no excuse for having babies and not having things to do I agree I've got lots of personal training clients that have young children and I always encourage them take them to the park and let them go and then you can that's that's your training partner yeah you you can run around and play with them yeah I think playing is really important for adults too like have stressful busy lives and work so hard and always want bigger house and a better car and all these types of things but we forget to play sometimes and playing is so healthy physically yes uh, and also mentally i reckon it's a de-stressor so if you can get out and play you know go and do it don't worry about going to the gym get outside and play there is so much you can do out there. And I know I was at a health retreat. I did work experience there a long time ago and they just blew up these balloons and they just got people walking, you know, they were all adults just tapping the balloon around and you had to follow this balloon. And everyone was just killing themselves laughing by the end of it because it's so much fun and just so simple, but it's just something that a child would do. Absolutely. I mean, and that's the, that's the mental health as well. I mean, this is going down a different path, but, you know, mental health, physical health, that all ties in together. So going back to the paleo lifestyle, is it possible to be a vegetarian and be a paleo? Look, it is, but it, it, it would be very tricky. I mean, you've got a healthy fats are the, as, is the main source of energy that we should be getting our energy from. So mm-hmm. cuts of, that have got high fat, like fish and salmon. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I mean, if you weren't eating meat or a vegetarian, you'd have to eat loads of avocados, nuts, healthy yeah. oils, coconut oils, olive oils. But I mean, you can do it, but there's just less options. They can have eggs as well, I Eggs suppose. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit more tricky because you're not meant to be having the legumes and things like that. That's right, yeah. Yeah. And what tips have you got for somebody that's wanting to start out going paleo? Has, how, where can they begin? I reckon it's a step-by-step slow approach. I mean, if you did, uh, if you're used to eating lots of bread and rice and pasta and grains and processed food, maybe try one day where you cut out all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Or if, if you're doing it every meal, cut out one meal. Yeah. And then just gradually try and decrease the amount of bread you're eating. Yes. I find that bread is the number one thing for people, and it's the hardest thing to cut out. But it's so can, easy, isn't it, it to is make a sandwich easy, or yeah. yeah. But it's um, and if you're eating loads of bread, it's just that it's so dense in carbohydrate that it pushes your blood sugar levels up really high. Mm. And insulin has to come and act on that and, and bring it back down again. So you're putting your body into this constant fight with your blood glucose levels. So, you know, just try and cut it out one day. Yeah. And then the next week, cut it out two days. And then eventually you'll feel more energized and you'll realize that, um, you know, it's better to not eat it. And if people want to incorporate the paleo lifestyle in, in, into their lives, do they have to follow it strictly? Well, yeah, as I just said, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a gradual thing. I mm. personally like to go out to all these great restaurants in Melbourne and you know, eat Italian food and indulge sometimes. But I guess it's about an 80-20%, 80%, 80% yeah. paleo. Like mm-hmm. I always cook paleo-style food. But at home. I, at home. Yeah. But if I go out, I mean, I'm not going to say no to those yummy things that's on offer <laughs> around town. Yeah. Because it's it, it's got to be fun. I mean, if you kind of think about it too much, I think it, it just gets a bit hard and it wears you down a bit. Yeah. I think, I suppose, the you know, people get too fixated on what they eat, don't they? And they get a little bit stressed about it. And probably the stress from that is much worse for them than the health benefits of the good food they're eating. I agree. Yeah. So if people want to go see your amazing restaurant, Patch, I've been there and the food is incredible, or find out about your personal training, where can they find more information on you? Thank you very much for that little plug, Rani. It's 32 Bendigo Street, Richmond. It's in the old Channel 9 building. Yeah. It's open every day. And check out my Instagram, Tom Primal. Tom Primal's my business name, and um, and I'll be developing. I've, I've just written an e-book, which is, called oh, okay. Primal, which is called The Primal Kickstart. It's for someone that's never done exercise and, and wants to change their lifestyle and get a bit healthier. And it's coming out soon. Cool. We look forward to seeing it. I've got to ask, is Primal your original last name? No, it's not. <laughs> okay, good. No, it's, it's not. Davidson. It would have been an amazing story. Yeah. I think it's a little bit of a play on words and it's Primal is kind of a word that people seem to be interested in. And, and we won't forget. Yes. And it fits in well with the whole hunter-gatherer. 
Absolutely. Paleo style. So, so basically what you're saying is that it's quite easy to start incorporating paleo into someone's life and you can start one step at a time and just start moving and having more joy in life. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I think that's a really great message. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you very much.